Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over the basics of the PR interval. As we already know, the PR interval starts at the beginning of the P wave and ends at the beginning of the QRS complex. The PR interval usually lasts between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds. It is shorter in children and during tachycardia and it is longer in the elderly during bradycardia, AV nodal blocks, with the ingestion of parasympathetic medications, and during hyperkalemia. Now, the last of which, hyperkalemia is deadly, and if you haven't already, be sure to check out our CCRN prep video on the management of hyperkalemia because it will make things so clear. So we know that this PR interval, it represents atrial depolarization and conduction through the AV node. Now, this means that during the PR interval, the SA node depolarizes, which depolarizes the internodal pathways, the Bachmann bundle, the AV node, the bundle of Hiss, the left and right bundle branches, and lastly, the Purkinje system. But Christian, I thought that the PR interval was just atrial and AV nodal electrical conduction. This is only partly true. In reality, the isoelectric portion or flat portion of the PR interval called the PR segment, which is located here, is also representative of the conduction through the AV node, through the bundle of Hiss, through the left and right bundle branches, and through the Purkinje system. But all of these conductions are electrically silent because they're so small. Remember, these are not muscle cells. These are just specialized electrical conduction cells. It is so small that the EKG doesn't pick up the impulses as they are translated through our tissues and onto the electrodes in our skin. Now, the important thing to remember about the PR interval is that it mainly represents AV nodal delay. This allows the atria to finish physically kicking that last bit of blood into the ventricle. Now, as an example, to make sure that we really understand the PR interval, let us say that we receive an EKG tracing that shows a shortened PR interval of less than 0.12 seconds and it has an inverted P wave. Now, logically, we must think that this is an abnormality caused by an ectopic pacemaker bundle. Why? Because the P wave has a different morphology or different shape. If you haven't watched our P wave videos, be sure to refresh yourself on those before continuing. Now, I will tell you now that an inverted P wave indicates that the pacemaker bundle is located somewhere in the lower atria, or it can mean that the AV nodal junction is generating an impulse of its own. Now, if we have a pacemaker bundle that is located in the lower atria, like so, it will generate a depolarization vector that is aimed upward and rightward, meaning that it will seem inverted or moving away from leads one, two, V4, and V6. Also, if the impulse is located in the AV node, it will also create a positive depolarization impulse that is upward and rightward. And it is moving away from leads one, two, V4, and V6. So knowing this, we go back to our example in lead two. We find that we have an inverted P wave. We know that it is because it didn't come from the SA node, right? It must have come from an abnormal bundle of pacemaker cells that is either the AV node itself or a pacemaker bundle that is located in the lower atrium. So how do we tell these two apart? How do we know if it's in the AV junction or if it is coming from a pacemaker bundle in the lower atrium? It is simple. We measure how long the PR interval is. Think about it. If the PR interval is within normal range, but longer with an inverted P wave, it is likely that it is because it has a pacemaker bundle in the atria. This is because the impulse, the impulse 
took all this time to travel from the atria to the AV node where it experienced AV nodal delay. Now, if our PR interval is on the short side and we have an inverted P wave, we know that this impulse likely began in the AV node itself. Why is this so? This is because if the AV node generated its own impulse, the impulse obviously did not have to travel far to reach the AV node because it was in the AV node. Therefore, there will not be much AV nodal delay. In fact, it'll take away all this so you can see how short our PR interval would be. Now, in our example, we saw that in lead two, we had an inverted P wave with a PR interval that was on the shorter side. We can deduce that this abnormal looking PQRST complex likely came from an impulse that was generated in the AV node itself. As always, thank you for taking the time to learn with us today and remember to like and subscribe for more content.